dominant seventh chords are the topic of the week, both in ear trading class and in theory. <clears throat> now, the important thing in theory to understand is that the dominant seventh chord, its job, the job of dominant function is to make you want to return to the one chord. That's the job. So uh, amidst all of um, the textbooks, verbiage, and diagrams, which are all very important for you to read and get a sense of, but I don't want you to get lost in those weeds. I want you to get lost in making sounds at the piano or with your voice, <clears throat> which I'll talk about another time, um, going from a one chord to a five seven chord, whether the five seven chord has the third in the bass, which would be the uh, five six five, <laughs> or if it has the fifth in the bass, which would be the five four three, or if it has the seventh in the bass, the five four two. Remembering that these five chords, within their dominant function, have two sort of basic things that happen. One is as a passing chord, right? We're moving from a one chord to another one chord with this five chord in between. And then the other thing is um, resolving a, a, um, a phrase or ending a phrase with an authentic cadence. Now I'm gonna say now the difference between the two kinds of authentic cadences. I'm gonna do this on, on the screen. The two kinds of authentic cadences. There's the authentic cadence that feels most resolved. That is a perfect authentic cadence. It has the root in the bottom, so it's in, it goes to a one chord in root position, and the soprano voice is singing do. It has the root of the chord in the soprano as well. That makes it perfect because there's a perfect octave between the bass and the soprano. That's why it's called a perfect authentic cadence, but you've got to remember that it's an authentic cadence. People get confused. They think it's like a perfect something else. No. Perfect is a kind of authentic cadence. The other kind of authentic cadence, imperfect, right? It's an imperfect where maybe one of the chords, one, either one of the chords is not in root position, makes it imperfect, or the soprano voice ends on something other than do ends on something other than the root of the chord. That makes it imperfect. So I'll say that there. You'll get tested on it later. Okay, but again, going back to the big picture, all these different kinds of ways of describing how to write in four parts, the big, the big thing you want to know is that fa, that the, actually this is fa, fa in the five chord is the seventh of the five chord. And T is the third of the seventh chord. And they're pushing or pulling away from each other in a very profound way for your ear. T makes you want to hear Do. T, T, Do, right? Um, T, Do, So, Fa, Mi, right? Fa, Mi, that's what the job of Fa is. Both of, the, of those tones are present in the dominant seventh chord, in the five, seven chord. Whether it's in root position, first inversion, second inversion, or third inversion. So if you really get your head around and your ear around too, this this feeling of fa and t sort of mm, moving. By the way, from fa to t, from fa to me is one of the half steps in the major scale, and from t to do that's the other half step. So the only half steps in the major scale involve fa and t resolving in their respective directions. Okay, enough on that. Go make music.